The Honourable Le Leader of the Second Opposition. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, for years, Madam Speaker, the Premier has been repeating inaccurate information about health care funding in Manitoba. When the Premier, as a Harper Conservative MP, voted to change the health care formula and cheat Manitoba funding, I thought it was wrong. I thought it was wrong when, in 2014, the Harper Conservative government unilaterally imposed health increases of 3% a year instead of 6%. But an increase of 3% is still an increase. The government's own figures show that for the last three years, actual health care funding has been uh, frozen. Madam Speaker, the Premier spent 18 months refusing $400 million in new funding for mental health and home care. Can the Premier explain what he expected to gain by denying Manitobans new funding for mental health and home care for 18 months? The Honourable First Minister. Uh, what we expect <coughs> to gain, Madam Speaker, by standing up for Manitobans and all Canadians who value health care is a sustainable health care system. And to do that, we need a partnership with a willing government in Ottawa, and I certainly hope we find one soon. <laughs> the Honourable Leader of the Second Opposition on a supplementary question. Uh, Madam Speaker, the Premier is a kind of Monty Hall in reverse. His motto could well be, let's break a deal. He's ripped up deals he didn't like. He's refused uh, to honour agreements with municipalities, Order. with the MMF. And he's dragged his feet on signing deals on cannabis that revenue, the environment, right? housing, health care, infrastructure. The question is whether this is useful or effective, Madam Speaker. Order. It's not clear. <coughs> it's not clear the Premier is achieving anything from his failed negotiation tactics, because what is happening is that we're losing opportunities right, left, and centre. The Premier is opposed to what he calls boutique funding for strings attached. The reason strings have to be attached to his funding is so that the Premier doesn't just use $400 million to give himself and his ministers another tax cut. I'm sure most Manitobans don't think of mental health care or home care as boutique programs. Does the Premier? The Honourable First Minister. Of course not, Madam Speaker, nor do I, nor do members on this side of the House consider the rule of law to be a boutique right. <laughs> nor, do we, nor do we consider freedom of speech to be anything but something that people in this country are entitled to. That's why we object to a Prime Minister that would limit the freedom of speech of his own Cabinet members. Right. That's right. why we take strong exception to any Prime Minister and any government that would subjugate the rule of law to their own political purposes in the province of Quebec Order. or in any other province of the country. That's why we'll continue to stand up for the people of Manitoba and for the rule of law, and I would encourage all members of the House to do the same. Here. I'm starting to have some difficulty in hearing what is being asked and answered because of the increased level of heckling that is going uh, on here. And I uh, would just going to give everybody fair warning. I've started my list today, and I have heard a number of people that are on that list. And I would urge you to um, be very careful uh, for the rest of the time that we are in oral questions and the rest of the day and the rest of the week because uh, this will be an ongoing list now. I think we have to move towards a better sense of, uh, of uh, respect in this chamber and uh, as we move towards that, we will move towards a better system of democracy. The Honourable Leader of the Second Opposition on a final supplementary. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. This government has enjoyed talking about the promises since their, their promises since the release of their most recent budget. One they seem to have forgotten is that shortening wait times for priority procedures like hip and knee replacements and cataract surgeries, along with many of the other neglected promises this uh, party has made, it's located in the Premier's 2016 platform on page 21, which I table. The wait times in the, for, these, uh, for these procedures in Manitoba have been getting worse for four years straight. And these are not just numbers on a page, Madam Speaker. Each of these are Manitobans whose health is being threatened. And it's not just to balance the budget, Madam Speaker, because we're still going deeper into debt with this government. This government has broken promises on health with every budget. Every year, they've promised to spend more, but by year's end, it's been frozen and has never been spent. Why has this government been actively opposing more investments in health care? The Honourable First Minister. I appreciate the question. A $400 million plus increase in the health budget is certainly evidence of a commitment to health care. I also would uh, thank the member for raising the topic of breaking deals in fairness, because any question like that from a Liberal currently would be uh, kind of a welcome opportunity for uh, anybody to respond, and I'm going to respond today by saying we're keeping our commitment to making the workplace 
safer here in Manitoba. When Winnipeg Labour Council President Bazia Sokol went to the provincial NDP and asked for help after she was subjected to intimidating, insulting and vulgar remarks, she got none. And they replied that they didn't have a policy on harassment. Well, we do, Madam Speaker. We have a policy and it's a no wrong door policy. Not that the wrong door is the NDP door. Every one of us has an obligation to provide better working conditions for women in our province. All of us have that obligation. And the members opposite to me are ashamed of themselves, and I'd like a full explanation from them as to how it is that they can turn a woman away when she's facing that kind of intimidation and do nothing about it. Here, here.